Hi, I'm Orville, and on today's service headquarters, we'll be talking about this little guy right here, the proximity sensor. Now, we've used these sensors all across Haas product line, and today, I'm going to give you an overview of some easy ways you can troubleshoot problems with these sensors. When proximity sensors have problem, you usually won't get an alarm telling you it's the sensor. Instead, you'll probably get an alarm for one of the device the prox sensor is helping to control. Maybe the zero return position of an axis or the tool pocket up and down position. Proximity sensors are electromagnetic devices and they are used to detect the position of the moving system on our machine. These sensors come in several varieties, but they all work the same way. When voltage is applied to the sensor, it activates the magnetic field in the sensor's face. And when a metal object moves close to the sensor's face, it will trigger. We use both 12 volts and 5 volt sensors here at Haas. We'll start off troubleshooting with the 12 volt sensor, and then in a little while, we'll come back and troubleshoot the 5 volt sensor. So I'm ready to check my sensor, but where is it? Well, just like you might imagine, the sensor is usually close to the thing it's sensing. Say you've got a 626 tool pocket slide error alarm. Then you'll be looking for that sensor near where the pocket moves up and down. Or if you're getting an alarm 114 turret clamp fault on your lathe, then you need to get in the back of the machine and find the clamp sensor in the space behind the turret. So we found our sensor and we're gonna check it three ways. First, visually, then the on-screen diagnostics, and third, we'll check the voltage. Let's start with a visual check of the sensor. Is there any obvious damage or contamination on the sensor? Are there any metal chips sticking to the face or the body of the sensor? Clean them off. Those chips can cause sensor reading errors. Grab a small screwdriver and move it close to the face of the sensor. Check if that sensor light comes on or goes out. Next, go to the diagnostic page and find the status bit for the sensor you're testing. Then take a small magnet and place it on the PROC sensor's face. Then go and check the bit if it changed state. The sensor should change from zero to one or one to zero and stay there when that position has been reached. The readout should stay steady and not flicker. Now we want to verify the voltage at the sensor, especially if the diagnostic bit is flickering. Set your voltmeter to DC volt and make sure you have some long, narrow probes. This makes it easy to get a good reading without damaging the pins or the connector. Haas machines use both normally open and normally closed sensor. A normally open sensor is open or non-conductive when unpowered. A normally closed sensor is the opposite, with the sensor being conductive when it's unpowered. Voltage reading from these two kind of sensors are typically opposite of each other. To test a normally open two-wire proc sensor, connect the negative lead to the blue wire and the positive lead to the brown wire. With the sensor not activated, it should read 11 to 13 volts DC. With the sensor activated, it should only read two to three volts DC. To test a normally closed two wire proc sensor, connect the negative lead to the blue wire and the positive lead to the brown wire. With the sensor not activated, it should read two to three volts DC. And with the sensor activated, it should read 11 to 13 volts DC. To test a normally open three wire proc sensor, connect the negative lead to the blue wire and the positive lead to the black wire. With the sensor not activated, it should read 11 to 13 volts DC. With the sensor activated, it should read zero to two volts DC. If you have voltage at the sensor, but the sensor will not change state when the bit is stripped, then the sensor needs to be replaced. This is true for both normally open and normally closed sensors. Now, 
So far, we've only checked the voltage to the sensor. If the sensor's diagnostic bit didn't change, we need to figure out our problem with the sensor. The sensor connection, the cable going to the control I.O. board, or the I.O. board itself. So we just saw voltage at the sensor and watch it change as we activate the sensor. Now, if there's no voltage at the sensor, we need to move on to the cable side of the connector. If there's voltage at the cable's connector, then you know the cable is good and the connector or sensor may be bad. If there's no voltage, move on to the I.O. board. Locate the cable connector for the proximity sensor cable you're testing. To test the sensor output at the I.O. board, you'll need a jumper for the cable connector you're testing. In this case, we're testing the pocket down sensor at location P3 using the tool changer jumper part number 33-8521. Check the diagnostic screen. If the bit changes when the jumper is installed, you know the I.O. board is fine and your connecting cable is probably bad. If the bit doesn't change, then you need to call your HFO and have them come and check your I.O. board for possible issues. So that wraps up the testing for the 12 volt sensor. That leaves us with the 5 volt sensor and they're tested a different way. 5 volt sensors are used in all or axis home position and voltage can't be measured at the connector like the 12 volt sensor. But since the home sensor and the encoder for each axis share the 5 volt signal coming from the processor, there is another way and it's very simple. In order to reach the home sensor, you need to open up the way covers. And if this seems like something you'd rather leave to an HFO technician, then now is a good time to give them a call. Here are the locations for the home sensors of your Haas vertical. The x-axis, the y-axis, and the z-axis up on top. Now you don't want to have to pull both covers just to find which side have the home sensor. With the way covers pulled back, checking the sensor is the same as before. Move the screwdriver right in front of the sensor's face and check the diagnostic bit to see if it changed state. Let's say it doesn't change state, but you know you should have voltage at the sensor because you don't have an encoder alarm. That means you could have a problem with the electrical connector. Unplug the connectors and check for contamination or loose connections. If you find any corrosion or contamination, clean it out with contact cleaner and apply some dielectric grease, reconnect it and test it again. If the pins are loose in the connector, then it's time to replace the sensor. You can order a replacement sensor at haasparts.com. Finally, there could be times when the sensor is working, but it's not reading the trip flag. If the screwdriver triggers the state of the sensor, chances are the sensor is good. Now we need to check if the sensor is physically close enough to the trip flag to detect it. Jog the table to the position where the trip flag is adjacent to the proximity sensor. And then he stopped the machine. Be sure to take the necessary safety precaution while working inside the enclosure with the power on. Down at the proximity sensor, loosen the trip flag and align it with the sensor. The air gap should be between 30,000 and 80,000. Tighten up the screws and recheck the sensor state. At this point, we've cleaned our sensors, connectors, and checked for loose pins. We've adjusted our home sensor trip flag. We've checked for voltage, and we should know if it's a sensor, the cable, or the I.O. board is our problem. If you've gotten this far and you're still not sure where your problem lies, then it's time to give your local HFO a call so they can help you out. For more information on your Haas machines, visit diy.haascnc.com. And to order replacement parts, visit haasparts.com. Thanks for watching.